Since 1990, two very similar looking 3D softwares has been released. But while one is used professionally, the other one is known for the fandom and memes. But what makes them different from each other? Why is one free while the other one is expensive? Well, today I want to dive down and finally answer the well-known question about why studios uses Maya and not Blender. Let's start with my favorite software, Blender. Blender is an open source 3D software and it has so many options that if I mentioned them all, we would be here for hours. So let me go through the best ones. You can make animations with keyframes, you can shade to make something look pretty, you can put in light, a camera, and basically be your own film director. So if you're looking to start out 3D, this is the software for you. It was created by Ton Rusendal back in 1994. And in an interview with Andrew Bryce, Blender Guru, he explains that it isn't the money that motivates him, but the creation and further development of Blender. Yeah, but I, I, I was never interested in money. Money doesn't mean anything. I call myself a maker. I want to make stuff. I, I, that's my passion. And the money is a means. And sometimes you need it to do something big. So you have to work, make money, and then you can do something with it. But the real satisfaction is in making something. That is the secret to why it's open source and free to use. Wow. That is just beautiful, man. So because of this simple element, open source and free, Blender has created a whole new generation of free artists like me, for example, and inspired hundreds of memes. And bruh, there are some good ones out there. That is Blender in a nutshell. Beautiful, right? So what about Maya? Looks similar, right? But if you look at the workflow, that's not the case. Maya uses all these NURB services and also has a more CAD software approach to workflows. It seems like it actually combines CAD software abilities with normal 3D modeling from Blender. Still don't believe me? Well, let's look at the start. He draws the 2D square and scales it up. When Blender, you would import a square and then just scale it to your liking. It's sort of a hybrid approach where it combines CAD elements with Blender's modeling interface. That's pretty damn cool. Now, Maya's story on the other hand, that is messy. Because in any other world, I don't think Maya would even have existed. The story starts with three companies. Alias Research, Wavefront Technologies and Samsung Digital Limited. Their goal was to make the greatest 3D software at the time. And the biggest competitor out there was Autodesk with 3D Studios, later known as 3D Max. But in 1995, a company named Silicon Graphics said, Nah fam, we want to create the greatest 3D software so people keep buying our computer hardware. So we're buying you, you and you. Autodesk, your time is over. Silicon Graphics then made Alias and Wavefront fuse together and they released Maya in 1998. But over the years, as more 3D softwares came out as Blender, 3D Max, Cinema 4D and cheaper computer hardware was available, Silicon Graphics was facing huge financial trouble. So they only had one choice left, to sell off Alias and Wavefront to a private investment firm. But I guess it wasn't so private because Autodesk, their biggest competitor, ended up buying Maya from them in 2006. Wait, so you're telling me Silicon Graphics unwillingly ended up selling their own 3D software to the same company they wanted to compete against, basically undoing everything they did. God damn, bro, that gotta hurt. But honestly, if you have financial trouble, there aren't really much you can do. You're basically forced to do something. And even though the hardware Silicon Graphics made was used by industries like Pixar and Disney, they were kind of forced to it. So I, I see the point. But for us, the consumers, it wasn't really so bad that Autodesk now owned Maya. Because in 2008, a little animated show release you probably heard about called the Clone Wars, made by Lucasfilm Studio, they got the right to use Maya for their project. 
And let's just say Clone Wars was a huge success. And since that, Maya has been used to make movies like Tangled, Frozen, and my all-time favorite movie that's hugely underrated, Wreck-It Ralph. Bro, how the f*** did they make something as good as this? I mean, the characters, the story, everything blends together, and the feelings you feel while watching it. It's really an emotional role. Getting off script here. Oh shit. Yeah, sorry. Maya was a really important element in the future of Disney and Pixar's animated movies. It was not the backbone, but we are still up in that level. And again, Clone Wars. But if we go back to the main question, what is the real reason why they're using Maya? Why are they willing to pay $14 to $1700 a year for Maya when Blender is free? Well, for what I can see, this is the thing that makes Maya powerful. First of all, you get the best of both worlds. Maya is the perfect middle ground. It's like Blender and Rhino went together and had a baby. That baby is Maya. So you get the cat functions combined with Blender's organic design. That is a powerful combination for both industrial buildings and human characters. So will one of them replace one another? Nah, I don't think so. I think they both serve different purposes. So honestly, I think it's actually beautiful that we have all these 3D softwares. Because if we only had one, the limit of what we could make would be much less. And our goals are different. Some make videos, some make 3D animations, and others make full-on movies. So whatever your goal is, there is a software out there that fits your needs perfectly. So you just need to go find it.